Self-education, self-education first and foremost. Um, big team and little eye is always the objective. Big team, little eye, but the little eye got to do the homework in terms of really sitting down, uh, becoming more aware of your own surroundings, becoming more aware of what America means, uh, what it's meant for people that are brown and black, and what it means for us going forward. But more imperatively, man, you really just got to educate yourself which will then lead to you educating your tribe, meaning your individual family, and then collectively we, we can run the ball a little bit better than we're doing. So we're just trying to continue the mission. Anybody built uh, like Nipsey, you got kings, you got princes, you got princesses, you got kings of kings, you got neighborhoods, you got regions, but then you got the entire collective that far reaches beyond this country. Um, beautiful African and then island influence included. We need to all be in the same like minded light spirit not dark spirit because it really is at this point a battle between light and dark and i mean that including within our own community not just on some white and black bullshit within our own community so we got to get self-educated so we can be group educated that's it peace trying to accomplish like you know what I have to tell you I just had the worst experience inside with the um, with the gang and I got programs for my family be because we were um, getting seated and literally they punked me for my programs and I said I'm a six-year-old woman really this is what you want and he literally told me he didn't care I don't think Ermius would appreciate that it really I'm really upset about that I just hope my family is safe in there. You too. Cool. All right, uh, tell me your name. Uh, Rami, with my kosher deals on stage. Cool. All right, Rami, we're here at the oh. Nipsey Memorial. Yeah. Obviously, Nipsey meant a lot to a lot of people. Uh, what did he mean to you? I was late. Yeah. I was late. I, I heard about him when he sold the $100 mixtapes. So I'm from New Jersey, and yeah. I moved out here. And uh, 
you know, I grew up on like Boys in the Hood, you know, like in my 30s. So I was kind of like the movies, and I always wanted to come out here and do music. Right. And the day before it happened, I went to uh, this Lost and Swap meet for the first time, and I was like, oh man, it's like from Boys in the Hood, and we went through the whole, and I went through with my other buddy who was a uh, former grip and he's in a wheelchair and we were just talking about Nipsey like the whole day and I never spoke about it. I never just really spoke about it and I knew about a story right around the corner from a store and the next day it happened so I thought you know immediately to kind of really dig in because I thought there was a you know I believe in something up there higher power so I felt like I really dug into it and now it's like you can't escape this is basically the Tupac what je generation times by 25 years in technology and spread instantly through the world and to really like grasp how much it affected people I think if maybe Tupac lived till his 30s it could have maybe achieved something that Nipsey did I think if you got to compare that but I don't you know I saw some friends here I wanted to take a picture with them because like we're gonna remember this 50 years from now we're gonna remember this day and you live down the street and the crazy thing is, like, I brought a lot of my Jewish friends over to uh, the marathon stores, like South Central, which is like six miles from like Pico Robertson. Yeah. And I was like, is it crazy how segregated every neighborhood is? We live six miles away, and we'll never see the other neighborhood. We go 100, 200 miles to visit somebody else in like New Jersey or wherever, like it's nothing. Yeah. But it's, uh, you know, I, I think it's, uh, it's very admir admir admirable yeah. what this guy did. For his neighborhood because i think people from all different kinds of backgrounds are trying to do the same thing but and i think he was just like introducing that to his community you know like you hear a lot about uh him bringing gangs together different hoods or sets together you're jewish i know hip-hop has brought people together all over the world as far as the music but how do you yeah. feel like just as a community <clears throat> as a peep as people that we could be brought better together as just a race of people um you know specifically through hip-hop i mean that's sort of what unifies everybody right because i i was listening to uh some of the albums since like 99 you know 20 years you know i've been, I've been rapping that like started rapping that long ago and you know if you look back at like civil rights movements jewish people are marching in the front with black people but like media for instance could totally warp what's actually happening and deliver the same news in 20 different ways and because we've become so consumed without like community like we're on the internet more than like leaving our house like I said I live six miles away but it took me like six years to go six miles you know um, I think it's you know mind-boggling that we're not getting together more often than than less. Yeah, we can we continuously consume everyone else's content and and facts and opinions without actually interacting. So we formulate biases against other people. No further tickets distributed for the next Hustle celebration of life. The box office will reopen for regular sales starting at 2 p.m. Once again, there will be no more tickets distributed for the next Hustle celebration of life. Appreciate the time. And yeah, man. Marco's sad. We're here uh, right in front of Nipsey Hustle Memorial. I have uh, Audra Kareem. Audra Kareem. Miss Audra Kareem um, here. And I wanted to ask you because I, I know you're running for neighborhood city council. And Nipsey was all about, or Ernest was all about the neighborhood. What can we as a community, or what can you as a councilwoman do to kind of support the the initiatives that Ms., uh, that Hermes was trying to accomplish? Well, let me first start off by saying that I didn't know Nipsey personally, um, just as much as um, I wasn't that familiar with his music, but I knew of his name, and when I learned about his death, and went online to like look at videos and stuff. Um, there was something that transcended with me, which is the fact that you know peace when you see it. And I think that's what he represented first and foremost, and apparently, you know, um, the turnout for his celebration of life is is at large. So it's, it's just something you can't take away from someone. And I hope that the people in the community, not just this community, but every community, you know, trying at least, if you hadn't made a change in your community, you want to make a change in your community, just continue his legacy. Just as 
the legacy of many other great people that have gone and passed, you know, so that's pretty much all I want to say. Okay. Um, um, when, when, are, when is your election for council woman? Like, how could we support you? Um, you can support me and most of all support the downtown neighborhood um, council. Downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council, that's what it's called. You can find it at dlanc.org. And I probably am embarrassed to be doing this while, you know, his celebration of life is going on, so let me just put that on record. But um, yes, I am running for um, Neighborhood Council at large is the position. And you can, um, when you see my name on the ballot, Audra Kareem, Please vote for me, but I intend to make some changes in the neighborhood. I have a lot of ideas that I want to implement with the council if elected, or even if not elected. I mean, we have a huge issue of homelessness and other things, and um, you know, it's just important to get in where your interests are and support that if at best. And that's what Nipsey did. And I just want to close with Nipsey because that's why I'm here. Strictly is for Nipsey and hustle and you know to celebrate his life with everyone else that his friends, his friends, his family, and his neighborhood, um, and his neighborhood, his community, the community that he advocated for for years. Yo, we here at the Nipsey Memorial. I will. My name is Wild West, man. Wild West. I represent Inland Empire, California. You know, I was also connected to the uh, South Central side, and um, you know, just here right now representing, mourning for Nipsey. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people out here today, man. Uh, I talked to some Jews, some Mexicans. Yeah. I, I'm sure people from different sets. I ain't from here, so I don't know, like you know, hoods like that. Yeah. But I mean. Why do you think, I mean, what was it about Nipsey that brought all these people together? Um, I think what brought everybody together was the fact that not only did he help other people, that he also showed you how you could, you know, he didn't, you know, he didn't, he could show somebody how to fish. He could give somebody food, but he showed you how to fish, you know what I'm saying? So that was the difference between Nipsey and the rest of everybody else, man. He was a, a good dude. Uh, strong mind, you know, self-empowerment and uh, self-improvement. He represented also uh, unity and helping other people, you know, yeah. and uh, also showing, most importantly, showing black people how to start their own businesses, man. Yeah. That's one thing I commend him. I'm from that era. I'm from the era of Black Sam and uh, he was a little bit older than that, man, but yeah. I mean, I know he's in the flesh, he's gone from us. We gotta put him in the ground yeah. later. But uh, what can we do to continue his legacy, his mission that he was on? Like, what can we as a people do to like keep on building on it? I mean, like I said, man, we can um, educate each other. You know, continue to um, to uplift and uh, you know silence all the negativity and violence out here, man. People don't know that L.A. and South Central had the lowest gang violence in gang history. You know what I'm saying? for 2018 and 19, so the plan was coming together, the plan was working, and uh, we're gonna continue to, uh, you know, unite and come together and as a people, man, and squash all this, this, uh, this separation. Appreciate it, Wild Wild West. I mean, Wild West. Yes, Wild sir, West. man. I'm Wild West, man. My contacts is uh, wildwestmusic.com uh, or West the IE Legend on Instagram, man, and um, subscribe to Black Tree TV, man. Love. It's been too hard living, but I'm afraid to die. I don't know what's up there. If white immigrants can come to this country 50 years ago with nickels and dimes and no education and come here and pool their little nickels and dimes and no education into, with, and set up little stores, develop these stores into larger stores, develop this into an industry which creates job opportunities for whites. Since Lincoln was supposed to have freed the black man 100 years ago, 
And today the black man, according to the government economist, has spending power of $20 billion per year. We feel that with the black man spending $20 billion a year, not setting up any businesses, not creating any industry, not creating any job opportunities for his own kind, he's not in a moral position to point the finger today at the white man and tell the white man that he's discriminating against him for not giving him a job in factories that he has he himself set up. If the black man has $20 billion, and these so-called Negro leaders are such geniuses that they can integrate white restaurants and integrate white factories and integrate, force themselves into that which the white man has set up, they should use this same ingenuity to show the black people how to pool our wealth and set up something of our own. And then we won't have to force our way into his anymore. One more thing I would like to point out concerning what he said about 125th Street. We don't waste our time on 125th Street, but you can reach more people in the street who want to change than you can in the bourgeoisie society, the bourgeoisie church, and the bourgeoisie circles. We, our program is directed toward the man in the street. So we spend our time in the street, and what we do with that man, instead of trying to change the white man in your mind, make, up, make you accept us, we change the mind of the black man and make him accept himself. And as soon as he accepts himself, He'll solve his own problem. He won't be trying to force himself into your factory and into your bedroom and into your kitchen. You know, like you said, uh, if I die today, I made the set proud, nigga. You made the world proud, you know. Look at this shit, bro. This shit, you know, the whole family appreciates everything and, uh, my grandma, you know, she, she loved him to death, and he loved her to death, and, uh, you know, I know she, she was already proud, but she can't, even, she can't even believe the news and the people calling and, and, and just the love that the people feel about bro, you know, is one thing that I know he's happy about also, just the family understanding what he meant to everybody else is it, very big. I don't want to be long-winded, man. I just, uh... you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll tell you some things. Maybe you didn't know about Nip, man. Uh, us growing up, you know, you know, he came, he came home. I was, I think I was already three when he came home. So, you know, I got whooped a couple times when he, when, he, when I'm in the room and he, came, my mom came in and he's crying. I got whooped. So, um, you know, that was my little bro, man, and I, I just try to do as much as I could to uh, lead a good example and uh, make sure that he was good, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs>